I have a stupid amount of books on my TBR pile. This isn't all of them. Th these are just the oldest ones. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm gonna put them down. I'm gonna put them down on the floor. So I've seen a few people do this. They, they go like, oh, it's the oldest books on my TBR. These are the oldest books that I own that I have not read. And, and usually they're like, oh, this book is so old. It was published in 2004. And I'm like, yeah, so old. <laughs> I'm not judging. We're not judging today. I'm just saying like, I expect them to pull out some like real old ones, some real old ones. And then they're like, 2004. I'm like, no. But anyway, it's an interesting way to like evaluate, you know, your, your TBR and be like, oh, has this been sitting here since like forever? <laughs> Yeah, okay. But I guess it also puts it into perspective. That, like, it doesn't matter. Like, books are a constant. You don't have to read them in a certain time frame because they'll always be there for you. Unless you, like, go blind or something and then you can't read them anymore. And that just got dark real fast. So we're going to go into talk about the top, like, I, I don't know how many books I have here. But, like, the top oldest books on my TBR. Should I start with the the latest or should I start with the oldest? Well, the oldest is on top, so let's just do that. Let's just do that. And this is oldest by publication date. It's not oldest like owned for the longest period of time or like oldest physical copy because honestly, I I don't even know how I would go about figuring that out. I have a very long, big, large, giant owned TBR pile that weighs on my mind sometimes. And then other times I'm like, fuck it, who cares? I have the space for it. A lot of these I bought at used bookstores. I don't have to justify myself. I make up the rules for my own reading. It's fine. Starting with the very oldest book on my TBR is The Three Musketeers. It was published in 1844 uh, by Alexandre Dumas. Dumas? Dumas? French guy. He looked like this. <laughs> I was going to read this in August uh, with a, a read along with Rinsey Reads, but then I didn't. I didn't get to it. I just, I missed it and then I, I didn't read it. Uh, but I will. I will someday. And if you don't know what The Three Musketeers is about, welcome to the world, young one. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain it because I didn't read it. I could be totally wrong, but I've seen the Disney movie and it is, it didn't age very well. <laughs> Charlie Sheen is the religious one. The next oldest one I have is Moby Dick, written in 1851 by Herman Melville. And I have this very pretty drop cap edition. It's the only of the drop cap editions that I own. I would like to get more, um, but I, I don't have the money. <laughs> Who does? This is about a whale. And a guy who's obsessed with the whale. And another guy who works for that guy and writes down the account of the obsession. And I have not read it because it's a chunker and you know, whatever, you, you don't blame me. You don't blame me. <laughs> I don't blame me. The next one, I think you'll be recognizing a theme here is uh, Les Mis. I'm not gonna pronounce that. I don't, I can't. By Victor Hugo, 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 Hugo. And it's a chunker and it was published and I wrote it down. I don't remember. 1862. So we have a lot of books that are very large, published in the 1800s that I own, but I have not even attempted to read. <sighs> Go me. <laughs> the next one I have even less of an excuse why I haven't read it yet, uh, because it's a lot shorter, and I actually won it in a giveaway, <laughs> which makes me feel kind of guilty for not having read it yet. Um, and that is Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, and this was published in 1891, I believe. This was a book that I missed reading in high school because um, my English class would alternate every other year with the books that they read uh, to, to give the teachers a break, and I was the year that did not read The Picture of Dorian Gray, so it's not even my fault. It's not my fault I haven't read it. It's high school's fault. <laughs> But if you don't know what this is about, it's about an evil man who does evil things, but his uh, portrait who, that he keeps up in the attic ages instead of himself. So all of the stupid things that he does happen to the portrait and not to him. And it's, you know, a lesson. There's a lesson in there somewhere. <laughs> then the next one was published in 1898, and that was Henry James's The Turn of the Screw. And this one I got at 
um, Shakespeare and Company. You can see the stamp in there. Uh, in Paris when I was on my honeymoon um, and it came in a uh, blind date with a book box. I don't know if you can see it in the frame right now but in some of my videos you can see the box with the stamp on it and it was like five euro and I'm like I want that I want a mystery book from Shakespeare and Company on my honeymoon it's so romantic um, but this is like a I think it's a okay. <sighs> these books are dusty <laughs> And I'm allergic to them. And it's getting like really dark outside because it looks like it's about to rain. So this is just working out in my favor, isn't it? Turn to the screw. I think it's like a, a little bit of a thriller, horror, horror thriller. It's, it's spooky. And that's why I haven't read it yet because I'm a wimp and I don't really like spooky things very much. Um, but I think I, I could probably take this one. I should probably just get around to reading it and stop being such a wimp. And then we're moving into the 20th century with The Enchanted Castle by E. Nesbitt and this was published in 1907. It is a children's book about these kids who uh, I think there's like a magic ring and they go to an enchanted castle and I, I never read it. And this is probably the worst one on this, this list of old books on my TBR because I've had it since I was a child. <laughs> and uh, it has some water damage on it. I loaned it to a friend and I think what happened was she was reading it by the pool and she like set it on herself and her bathing suit was wet so then the book got wet and then I was mad about that because I didn't even get a chance to read it before it got all got all wibbly. Uh, but yeah we should probably get around to reading that one. Probably wouldn't take very long since it's a children's book published over a hundred years ago, hundred and hundred and eleven years ago, God. And then we jump way to 1953 with Lucky Jim by Kingsley Amos. Uh, and this I picked up in a Warby Parker, actually. I was getting my glasses and they have books there. Did you know they have books like in the physical store of Warby Parker? <laughs> it's very hipster and strange, but I liked it because I like hipster, strange, booky things. I don't really know what it's about. Like I read the blurb when I picked it up and then immediately forgot what it was about. But it is regarded by many as the finest and funniest comic novel of the 20th century. Oh my. It remains as withering and eloquently misanthropic as when it first scandalized, scandalized readers in 1954, which it says 1954 on the back, but the publication date says 1953. So who's lying to me? Who's lying? And then we have 1956 with Italian Folk Tales by Italo Calvino, uh, selected and retold by Italo Calvino. And uh, I picked up his book, If on a Winter's Night, A Traveler, and loved it, loved it. So there was a time where I, whenever I saw like one of his books in a used bookstore, I would immediately pick it up to read later. And there's a few more later on this list, but they come after these next books. Oh, these two Agatha Christie books, um, The Pale Horse, which I have no idea what it's about. It was published in 1961. I don't even know if it fits into one of her, like, you know, characters, like Miss Marple or Her Hercule Poirot. Um, but I picked this up at, in London on a, like, a used book table by the Thames. Hmm. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so extra. I'm a horrible person. But anyway, I, I was there and I saw Agatha Christie and I'm like, well, I, I want to buy a book here. So I recognize Agatha Christie. So I bought it and then never read it. And then this one, I got it at Barnes & Noble in Allen Park, Michigan. <laughs> And uh, it's the Halloween party, and this was published in 1969. And uh, it's a Hercule, Hercule Perot. And I don't know what it's about, other than um, I, I suspect, if I were to venture a guess, guess, that it is about a murder that happens at a Halloween party. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't read it. I keep, that one I keep waiting to read in October and then like never reading it in October because I'm a mess. And then we have the previously mentioned Italo, Italo Calvino books, um, The Baron in the Trees and Difficult Loves, which were published in 1977 and 1985 respectively. And I don't know what they're about. <laughs> I just picked them up because they match my edition of If on a Winter's Night a Traveler and they're by Italo Calvino. And I really liked his other books. So then I picked up more from him and then never read them.
because I'm responsible. Finally, I was cutting it off with this one because we were getting pretty close to my d date of birth. <laughs> and I didn't want this, this uh, video to go on forever. And that is Dealing with Dragons by Patricia C. Reed. And it, it was published in 1987. Oh, it's raining now. Oh good, I don't have to water the yard just because it's raining. But anyway, I acquired this book when I was a little kid and then never read it. And then I think I either sold it or gave it away. I got rid of it. And then someone was like, oh, you never read that book? It's great. It's a great series. It's a great book. So then I re-bought a used copy of it. And I still haven't read it because I'm a garbage human being. And I just bent my book on myself to further <laughs> illustrate the point that I am garbage. So there you have it, a stack of books I have not read that are old. <laughs> if there are any of these that you think I should get to sooner than later, please let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll listen to you. <laughs> or maybe they'll just sit here collecting dust till I die. I don't know. <laughs> you never know what will happen. That's the great thing about life is that it is unpredictable. Just like this storm. That wrecked my lighting, but at least now I don't have to water the yard. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. I will see you in my next video. And until then, happy reading, nerds! Yes! <laughs> I just checked my notes. It is 1891. And this is a funny... This, is so, this book... So I bought this book when, like, or I 